What's up everybody, Ed Ricker here, and today is Solar Eclipse Day. Now, I've decided to watch this solar eclipse with my family. I'd much rather be with my family than be alone somewhere in some place strange. So, that's my plan, and I'm sticking to it. Right now, I'm checking out live streams, and I'm also checking on the weather, just as one last check here. Hey, top news story. Now today I'm using my Panasonic UX90 right here, and that's gonna be uh, containing the solar filter lens. Also using a tripod for steady shots, and then I have my GoPro in here, one of these pockets. So we're gonna get some time lapses or something like that, we'll see. Oh yeah, and sunscreen. <laughs> you don't wanna forget sunscreen on a day like today. I had a lot of people, both friends and you guys on the comments, you know, saying, Ed, if you're this close, just, just go all the way. Well, my, my only problem is I would be going alone. So we're going to a place sort of nearby, Campbell University, uh, and it's gonna be a public showing so people don't have to always be looking up at the sun. They can actually watch a telescopic projection on a display there. And it's just gonna be an, a better experience, better video um, all around just because we're together. I'm gonna do a little quick test run here at the park just to make sure I have my settings right. And then we are off to pick up my sister. I'm shooting over grass as opposed to the hot pavement. The first time I shot over hot pavement, and I think that's what kind of gave me some of the heat uh, wiggles in my image. So now we have an iris of f5.0. We're at uh, three or maybe four dB gain on the uh, ISO here. 1 60th shutter speed. Now I've been bumping up my camera settings to see if I can see the moon yet, but not yet. I'm still looking up for the moon. Where is the moon? Where is this moon? You know, I, I almost wonder if this is just some like practical joke from NASA. It's also been suggested that I fill up just in case we run to a traffic jam. All right, we're in the car. We're heading to Campbell University. And I, I say we because I'm here with my sister. Hello, I'm Stephanie Anderson. It's formerly Stephanie Ricker. We're going to meet uh, our parents. I almost said my parents again. I, I'm sorry. They, they're also my parents. Yes. yes. And it's gonna be like old times. Like 15 years ago, this would have been exactly what we were doing. We're all together, you know, in one spot, just the four of us. But we do miss Ross. Ross is yes. uh, Stephanie's husband. He's teaching school today. And Couldn't be bothered to take off work to view an eclipse. So Campbell University is in Bowie's Creek. Is that right, Steph? That's correct. Stephanie went to Campbell University for her entire college career. Is that right? That is also correct. Well, one thing that's also correct, and, and I can personally uh, affirm here, is that Rhett and Link of Good Mythical Morning grew up in that area, Bowie's Creek, and they they did not go to Campbell University, I don't think, but they, they were very close to that region, and they talk about it a lot in their earlier videos. They came, I saw them live there at Campbell University, but they were still like just just getting off into launching into fame. They came and, and did wow. like a skit at Campbell University. And we're like, who are these clowns? Yeah, I guess they're kind of funny, and that was before they were big. All right, we're here. Uh, Oops. Oh, are we? <laughs> Oh, I see Dad. He's right there. Yeah. Hey, there he okay. is in his white hat. We have to park. Yeah, we see you. We'll, we'll come over as soon as we park. All right. We're here. Let's do it. Yeah. Woo! How's it feel to be at Campbell University again, Steph? Uh, it doesn't even feel like Campbell University. <laughs> <laughs> it's so different. Hey. You well, might want to oh, there's one on that green if you want it. Yeah, the green will work great. Oh, wow. There it is. We already have Eclipse? Oh, yeah. Wow. We started early. Wow. Okay, well, let's set up. Didn't know it had already started. My God. Okay. One of the phone calls I made to you said it started early. You know, it started it started early. <laughs> the, yeah. the moon was ahead of schedule. Yeah. All right. So we have the, uh, the camera up. We have our solar filter on. We're pointed directly up at the sun. It is so cool. <laughs> I'm not gonna film the uh, the sun. I'll just film you looking at the sun. Nice. Isn't that cool? It looks like the moon, honestly, because of the way it is. You know, yeah. it almost looks like you have a a, a waxing or a waning moon, or what, whatever the term is. That's it. That's it's like a harvest moon. <laughs> we have to constantly adjust because the 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 sun keeps moving on us. Uh, maybe if the sky changes, or maybe the landscape changes, this GoPro hopefully will keep track of that and record it. So that right there is the telescope where they're projecting onto the display right there. It's the old, old thing. We've had it forever. Uh, and I just, it's kind of funny. Look at all the scratches on it. <laughs> Look at where some of the screws are resting. 
but he's doing his job. Yeah, it just, it's, I think it's something about the red badge of courage. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah. these are, these scars I bore on St. Crispin's Day. If you remember Henry V. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's My like a, It tracked really well when we tried it out Saturday. So you, uh, this is a tracker then, you're moving well, it? Well, no, no, it turns out the GPS fails to find where it is on the Earth's surface. Okay. okay the GPS receiver right here, the computer calculates where it is on the Earth's surface, and it figures how fast it has to track to keep whatever you're pointing at in the center of the field of view. Okay. Sometimes it, its calculations are better than others. Okay. So tell me a little bit about the filter that you have on. Obviously, you have a pretty heavy-duty filter. A, well, it's a 12 inch glass. Aluminized filter, you can probably see it from over here. Yeah, I see it. That reflects about 99% of the light that strikes it. Wow. Okay? It's brighter than any mirror you probably ever looked in before. A bathroom mirror only reflects about 30% of the light that strikes it. Okay, so this this ray here is going to kind of crudely. for a few moments. Okay, <laughs> so it's a solar powered uh, thing, so yeah. when, when we lose the sun, it's not going to move anymore. Yeah. Okay, so I see you're kind of doing the projector sort of way of doing things, right? You're kind of just a, uh, a simple reflecting telescope. It's got a big mirror on the bottom. There's another mirror right here. That mirror sends the image that is uh, perceived through the aperture, which is a big opening. Hits the mirror on the bottom, comes back up, hits this little mirror here, which sends it through the eyepiece, which is this long extension here. For looking at stars, you'd have a lens here, and you'd just be staring into the lens. But since it's so bright and such a uh, high energy object, we're projecting it onto this piece of paper instead. And it, the same concept as a regular telescope, we're just in projection mode instead of stick your eye up to eyepiece mode. It's one of those drives where you only have to set it up once and you yeah, in one direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta keep adjusting. <laughs> okay. Every few seconds. And that's all just due to the rotation of the Earth. Yeah, definitely. It's not like the sun's moving away from us, it's just our. Yeah, yeah. our view of the sun is getting distorted because the earth is spinning we're no longer where we were a couple minutes ago. If we were to get like total eclipse here, we would see the, I think the Bailey's beads is what yes. they call them. Okay. Where you see the actual mountains on the moon right before you get totality. That'd be pretty but um, I don't think we're going to get that today just because we're not going to get it 100%. All you do is point the binoculars towards the sun, okay. just like a telescope. And then the eyepiece, it, you focus it down on your screen that you have just on the ground. Oh, very cool. My camera's on auto settings, so it's bumping up the exposure, so maybe it doesn't look quite as dark as it could uh, in reality, but it's definitely gotten a little like it's overcast almost. Uh, we are about one minute away from the maximum coverage of the sun by the moon. You can already notice how much sunlight we have lost. Uh, it's truly remarkable to be here in the middle of August and there's a chill in the air. This is such an amazing event. And I want to thank y'all for being here. I've, I'm surrounded by 5,000 of my closest friends. Thank y'all for coming out for this. That's pretty much it. People are heading back. It was a pretty cool event. Okay, so this is apparently a place that Stephanie really likes called Sunny Skies Ice Cream. Sunny Skies is world famous, like legitimately world famous. It has incredible homemade ice cream and the hottest ice cream in the world. Do you like this? What is that, Mom? Vanilla and caramel. Mm. And you got orange chocolate? Mm. With them. Um, Chocolate Rebel. I don't know what that means, but I tell you what, that was a that was a pretty cool experience. Now it was not a total eclipse, and I guess that's kind of 
disappointing, but I knew what I was getting into. And the fact that I enjoyed it with my family and some friends as well um, really made it that much better. And I'm glad that I enjoyed it with them. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Thanks for coming along on this solar eclipse adventure. It's been a long time building up to this and now we can relax for seven years until 2024. That's when the next solar eclipse comes. Um, check the video description for some of the equipment that I use to make this video. Gizmos, gadgets, gear, video stuff. And until next time, happy shooting.